Okay, so uh, welcome to Thelonis. And uh, we are very really happy like, to, to have people from, from other companies, from other communities, because we always try at uh, Thelonis to give back to the community what the other of us have had needed. And in this way, that like, doing these meetups, inviting other communities to, to be here in this auditorium and also trying to, to share our knowledge, we are trying to give back to, to the community. And this is why we are here today trying to talk a little about communication. Usually we have a host and a speaker. Today it's very clear that, that I have some influence with the host because I'm the host <laughs> and the speaker. But uh, very happy to have you here. And so today I don't feel bad to, to talk a bit a, a bit about Celonis because I just keep getting time off from me, no? So <laughs> and I think that is completely worth it. So Celonis, we are a uh, a German company that started in 2011. We have started around the, the concept of process mining that in this moment was just a, an academic concept. And we bring it to the, to, to the companies, to the enterprises to help them. And we create this category inside our industry. And we did this category for a long time from since, there, since then. And then we evolved uh, as a platform combining with other fields that are complementary to us like artificial intelligence. And now we are like providing a, a process intelligence platform for the companies to help them uh, making their processes work better, be more efficient in time, in costs, and also in sustainability. That is one important piece of from for us. No? And also, I, I would like to say that we try to have this this good culture, this of contributing to to the world, contributing to to the community. So this is something also very important for us. And, and that we try to, to have in our, in our day today. Okay. So today we have this meeting navigating uh, communication. Uh, my, my friend Vasilis reminded me this morning that we are competing today with Taylor Swift and, <laughs> and you are here. So thank you so much. I will always have in the bottom of my heart that you choose me <laughs> over Taylor Swift. <laughs> I think that is a big accomplishment. No? Go <laughs> but jokes uh, aside, thank you so much for, for giving your, your personal time in, in being interested in, in this topic that I'm completely, I completely believe that is a very important topic. What I would try to do is, is to show you today you know, and, to, and to try to, to provide some, some value to, to spreading this, this importance and, and how we can get there. So very briefly, my name is Javier de Arcos. I'm Javi. I'm engineering manager uh, here in Celonis. But today I'm just a person that made a lot of mistakes in the communication side and also witness a lot. And I always wanted to, to keep learning and keep improving about, about communication. Also, you have there my, my um, nickname for, for X or Twitter or whatever, in case that you want to continue the conversation that we can have today. Uh, through through this platform. So, how this idea came to my mind when when trying to to propose a a, a talk that we could provide uh, some value. It came from one of my favorite quotes. That is this big quote, but I think that that is worth it. That is this one from Bernard Weber. That is like a French author that uh, wrote a lot of really good books uh, about. Uh, talking about a lot about philosophy, about human interaction, about uh, really uh, interesting topics. And it's this one about uh, between what I think, what I want to say, what I believe I say, what I say, what I, what you want to hear, what you believe you to hear, what you hear, what you want to understand, what you think you understand, and what you understand, there are 10 possibilities that we might have some problem communicating. But let's try anyway. And I really believe that this is happening. You know, there are a lot of the steps that we are not taking into account when we are communicating that can create a, a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of confusion. And it's very important that we are aware of them and we try to, to think on each of them to, to avoid some mistakes you know, and make the communication like flow more effectively. So this is more or less what, what we want to do today. Uh, to, I want to always to start with the why, no? so we know why it's important that we are here. 
talk a little about the how, the common problems that we usually have in communication and giving you some frameworks and tools. And what I would love is like when we end, when I end, we can continue the conversation, like sharing experiences, sharing your favorite frameworks, tools, what had helped you or not in, in communication. So let's start with the why. So communication is something natural, no? and, and as a lot of things that are natural, we, we usually don't put a lot of attention on it. I want to say something, I say something, that's all. And, and it's usually like that, no? as simple as that. But I don't know how many of you had some misunderstanding in the, in the last month. Okay, so communication maybe is not that simple, no? We think that we are communicating, but a lot of time communicate, we are not really communicating. So why is that? It is because of a lot of things, and, and luckily there are a lot of much smarter people than, than me uh, that dedicated their life to research and to try to provide things like knowledge about the theory of communication. And some of them, for example, are Paul Waslavic, Janet Dwyden, and Don Jackson, that were psychologists that were investigating in Palo Alto. What are the things like the actions of, of communication? And I think that this is, they found out like really important things, no? and I want to mention some of them today. So the first action is that one cannot not communicate. It is not something that we can avoid. Maybe, no, I, I'm a very bad tennis player, so I would not play tennis that so no. But every time that we choose to not communicate, we are also communicating something. Like maybe you don't respond a message and maybe you are angry, or maybe you are ignoring me, or maybe a lot of things, no? So we cannot choose to not communicate. We are always communicating. The second action is like all the communications are two aspects, the content, but also the relationship that define the communication. So it is not the same giving the same message to a friend than to a stranger. It is completely different. And also with each communication, with each message, we are defining the relationship. We are building the relationship with this person. Another action that also like the most pain that is more complex than what we can see is like there are always two uh, two communications going in the in the in parallel the digital communication and the analog communication when we are like transmitting something like face to face we are transmitting with words but we are transmitting only with our body language with our tone with our facial expression no so communication is language but it's not only language, no? It's psychology, it's human relationships, it's nonverbal communication, it's self-awareness, it's our biases and prejudices, it's a lot of things that are over communication. And yes, communication is something natural, but also it's something that is complex, that is hard, and that is unavoidable. So this is the why I think that this is an, an important topic. Um, I wanted to speak about it today. And here I put some personal notes during the presentation that you can trust or not. But I have like 10 years of experience in software engineering and some leading things. And I spend a lot of time discussing about which framework we will use, which programming language we will use, uh, how we will define the architecture. And with the experience, you understand that a lot of the problems we were not talking about technologies. It was communication. We were not communicating correctly between us. No? So most of the problems and solutions are related to communication, and that's all. So here, I want to also talk a little about the how, and this is like a little parenthesis, because it's not just for communicating, it's for a lot of things. But how many of you know about a, a person that you say that is a natural communicator? So, and how many know a natural language developer? Somebody? So, why is that, no? I, I read a book a long time ago and I, and I love it. I, I had this concept before, but the book is, is really well explaining this. 
that they are like two kind of minds, no? We, you can have this mindset of growth mindset where every skill can be learned and everything can be developed. So every time that you have a challenge, you can embrace it as an opportunity to, to, to learn. You will face the setbacks with this same mindset of, of I'm growing, I'm learning. And <laughs> therefore, it is something that you require to learn. No? And, and, and also, when you see a natural communicator, you are inspired. You can see, okay, I, I can be like that. No? And also, you can have the, the opposite, no? the, a fixed mindset. So you believe that, okay, I'm a smart, I'm a smart, and that's all. No? So if you believe that you cannot, something is a, like intelligence is static, every time that you have a challenge, you are like in defensive mode because if you are, cannot overcome this challenge, it means that you are like that, no? You are will always be down or you will, will never be a good communicator or whatever. No? So you have challenges, you give up very easily to not test yourself and find out that you cannot do something. And if you need to effort, need an effort to do something, maybe it's that you are not good enough, so you, you try to avoid it also. No? And, and also, if you just see someone that is good, you are more threatened than inspired. And this is something that, in, in, with a lot of topics, that every book put like completely in the opposite, no? And oh, I have growth mindset, and, and that's all, no? And I have a fixed mindset, and that's all, no? And, and like, we think that something like this is like, very definitive, but we have different mindsets depending on what we are talking about. So I'm completely sure that I can learn an, a new programming language. But then someone told me, okay, uh, you want to play, uh, to learn to play the guitar? No, I, I will never be able to, to learn to play the guitar. No? So with, maybe with artistic uh, areas, it is very common to be more like a fixed mindset. No? And I think that with soft skills happens a lot. No, no, no I'm a very bad communicator. I don't want to do, do a talk. I don't want to present something. No, no, let me alone. No? So it's like what I think that is important to have this in mind also in the communication. So what is really a, a natural communicator? It is someone that passes these four stages of competence. That it is the unconscious incompetence. I don't know what I don't know. No, the conscious incompetence. You really understand that it's something that you you can learn, but you understand that you are like a very bad at it at that moment. But you can learn. No? You can try. Then you learn, but you need to do a constant effort to, to like think about what you are doing to, to do it in a, in a right way. And finally, you come, become this natural. No? It is something that is in your day to day and you don't think about it, but really you are like doing a lot of things. And the only way to do that is with these three steps. Being aware of what you are missing, of what you, what you want to learn, educate yourself, then make some deliberate practice. And with deliberate, we are talking about you are really putting the effort on understanding what you are doing, what you can improve, what the mistakes that you are doing, and repeat. And that is the way that you can get to this habit of incorporating something in the day to day and, and become natural. No? And you can do also this in, in communication. Okay, so let's go to the, to the main topic. What are the problems that we have in communication? So we can go back to this quote. Maybe you can read it like on your own. I will not read it again. But it's like, OK, we have a lot of things that can go wrong in communication. But what was what Bernard Werber was referring to? What is very similar to this model of communication that was created by Shannon and Weber. Okay, And this model of communication says, OK, you will have a, an information source that will trust and that we create a message that will be transmitted in a, to a signal, will pass through a channel, a receiver will receive the signal, will decode the message, and we will get to the destination. And in this channel will be always noise, no? And this has uh, been used in, in telecommunication, for example, but also can be applied and is used in, in human communication. So you want to say something. You have a, an idea, a thought, so you transmit it verbally, you encode it in, in, in words and transmit it like in a face-to-face -face conversation or writing a message. There are always noise around 
uh, somebody like receive this message, they got what you are what you wanted to say, interpret it, and receive the message. No, and in each of these steps, something can go wrong. So every time that we are communicating, that we are having a conversation, we are doing this effort of encoding, transmitting, putting a message in a in a channel that can have interference, the coding, receiving, and all of these mistakes can go one on top of the other, making it difficult to communicate properly. So there are a lot of things that can happen and can go wrong in this in these little steps, no? So here I put some of them, no? Maybe the possible errors that we can have in, in, in the message, okay? We can have content errors. We can maybe transmit something that is wrong for the beginning, no? Some misunderstanding that we, we have or some lack of knowledge that we have. We can uh, say something that not have the, the complete context to understand. Or we, we can say something ambiguous, so it will be difficult from the beginning to understand the message. Also, the structural errors. Maybe we are write, writing an email, we are putting a lot of things in the middle, context, purpose, and once the person finishes reading the email, don't know what, what we are expecting from them. No? Complexity, no? using like very complex words, very complex uh, structures, redundancy, going again and again in the same topic that can, can also hurt the conversation. And we can have a stylistic error, no? have an, in a, an appropriate tune or, or have some uh, errors in the grammar in the spelling that can affect the, the message. Also, we can have encoding errors. Maybe we can have a cultural misunderstanding. I'm using a, an idiom that for me, uh, it is uh, something and I take it literal because I'm from another country. It's not my native language or whatever, no? That can be interference that we are talking and maybe there are noise in the back or we are like in a video call and the, and the Zoom is like uh, pausing. So, and we can have some sort of channel you No, know? Maybe we are not using the appropriate, the appropriate channel. No, we are like talking about something very complex that it would be much better to, to talk in a whiteboard or, or to like describe in a, in a document and, and pass the document. And also timing, you no? Know? Maybe we are saying something that it would pass and that had happened like long time ago and, and it's irrelevant or, or it's hurting. Maybe we are giving a feedback to someone or something that made one year ago and it's why, why you are saying this now to me, no? Or the opposite, no? Maybe like I, I'm rich right now, okay, what is like, what do you want to do for, for Christmas? It's like, let me alone, no? I don't want to think about Christmas right now. It's not. And in the noise, no, very important. We have environmental factors. We can have noise around. Also physical factors, not physical health. Maybe I'm very tired right now, so I will not be able to communicate, or I have some problem, and hearing problem, so it's more difficult for me. Semantic noise. Uh, right now I'm talking in English, that is not my native language, and maybe some of you also is not your native language, and you are like, I'm, I'm translating and you are translating. You know, there are double translation that can like make a lot of noise in the middle. And cultural differences, no? But for me, it's, direct for you is root. So we can, we need to take it into account. And lastly, psychological noise also. Like we all have biases and, and we have like some preconceptions that we uh, apply in every communication. So we need to be like, to think about that, no? And emotional state, maybe I'm very angry. So maybe it's not the right moment to communicate. And finally, in the reception, no? We can also like the code and like receive a message and do it read in, in a wrong way. No, we can have some uh, misinterpretation of the message. We can kind of uh, can have like a lack of context that may not break, make the, the wrong assumptions, lack of knowledge. Also, one thing that I really like is this selective perception. No, like a lot of times we are receiving the message, but we want to rest like we hear only what we want to hear. That's all. No? In feedback errors, no, that are very important. I don't know if you noticed uh, this arrow going back to the information source. That is very important. It's like the difference between UDP and, and TCP. You know, like I, we we need to acknowledge the communication in some way to so so we can like provide more information to the to the sender of the communication. 
So we can um, miss this feedback no? and, and making the communication harder, or, or we can give a feedback that is not uh, accurate. Or we can say, okay, yes, I understand, but it's, it's not true. No? And also something that is really important that is related with this uh, second action action that we talked about is this contextual errors, no? This big box that is surrounding the whole conversation. We will have the message context, the, the context that we need to under, for the message, but we have a context on all the communication, on the people that are involved in the communication. Maybe I'm your friend or I'm your manager, and it's very different. Maybe I'm your manager and I'm making a suggestion, but you understand it as an order because there is some authority there. You know? So these contextual errors about the social dynamics or, or relationship of cultural norms and also like something that can happen in communication. So, okay, we know a little like the errors. That I'm, now what I want to, to share with you is a lot of obvious things. A lot of obvious things, but that we forget a lot when we come out communicating. No? And these are like, some of our frameworks that I, I like and, and, and I think that are important and, and that we can use to avoid these, these mistakes. So first, very big obvious thing is message preparation. So I don't know how many of you really prepare yourself to, to give a message. Can you like, maybe like, are you, you prepare some communication during the week before doing the communication? Yeah. Depends on the context. That's nice. So every time that you need to communicate and more if it is something important, I think that it's very important to reflect about the purpose. What, what are you trying to, to achieve? You are just informing or you are trying to persuade someone? You are requesting something? You are asking for support? So this is very important because the communication will be totally different. The context. Are you giving enough context so you can be understood? The audience is not uh, the same to talk uh, with a technical person. If you are like also technical or with a non-technical person, it's something that I experience a lot, no? I, I witness a lot, no? Like we are like, I'm software developer, I lead a software team, and we are like in some meeting and they are explaining some of my, the, the, the people on my team are explaining in a very low detail that we are using a buffer to like concatenate, to do something to a person that just wanted to know uh, if the plan is going on track or not. No? And a lot of time this happens, no? because this, there is this selective perception, no? and maybe we are talking with our product manager, we are talking inside the team and you said to me, okay, I finished and now I need to do the test. And I say, okay, talk, we, we will talk tomorrow how it goes. No? But maybe you're talking with your fellow manager and say, okay, I'm finished. And I just need to make the test and, then, and you're finished. Okay, so let's take another one, no? So we need to, to be really sure about the audience. Also the channel, no? The, there are some things that are more, uh, are, are better to talk face to face. And there are others that maybe it's better to, to write and, and to reflect a little bit more and send it, no? We need to think about the channel and also the consequences. What are the possible consequences of my message? Maybe I'm, I'm like, yes, I need to, to like vent. I need to, to say something, but it's not something that, that's something that will hurt someone. So maybe it's better to not communicate in this case, not to, to avoid this communication and, and not create this consequence or any other, no? But in any communication, we need to reflect and we need to adapt. It is not the same depending on the context of the audience, on the channel, on the purpose. And one thing that uh, helps a lot with, uh, with the message is this concept of plain language. I don't know if you heard about plain language. Yeah. So plain language is a concept that uh, you can also like uh, see uh, referring to a, to a specific uh, uh, language, like plain English, plain Spanish. And it's a little of a small tips to make your communication more effective. And it's just a clear and simple language, no? Sometimes we are using like very, uh, 
difficult words or very like, oh, this, this sounds really good. I'm very smart, so I use this just very complex word, no? Or uh, I'm using like acronyms that also hurts a lot or very technical terms that maybe are not uh, well understood. So just a simple language, a simple words to also put a lot of attention on how you organize the information. And we talk about the, the problem that we can have, you, you can have with the structure, no? If you put like a very, very, very long context, maybe the, the people does, does not uh, read until the end or are not, is not listening to you at the end, no? So depending on what you want to transmit, what, you, what is your purpose, maybe you want to put what you want in, in the first place and make it a little more context, no? Think about it also. Also be concise, like uh, a lot of times, the less is the better, no? <coughs> the enough context, but very small, uh, short uh, phrases, short paragraphs that transmit better the information. Also avoid like complex structural, complex gra uh, grammatical uh, structures, no? Use active voice, be more direct. And also try to avoid talking in a very general way. Talk very about things that are very specific and concrete, put examples, no? So the first list can understand better. And related to this, there is a concept that is called the, the Goldilocks principle that comes from this Goldilocks tail. So Goldilocks gets to, to, the, to the house of these three girls and he, she finds like a, a, a bed that is too big, a bed that is too small, and the, the bed that is just the right, uh, of the right size and, and eats some food that is too hot and too cold. So this Goldilocks principle in communication that can be applied to really other things is that finding the just right balance, no? the just right amount of information and the just right amount of complexity. So your message is ready. And I don't have anything about, uh, against Goldilocks, but to illustrate this, this principle, I very prefer Ingigo Montoya. I don't know if you know about Ingigo Montoya. So it's like that, no? You give a little context, just the right context. My name is Diego Montoya, you killed my father, okay? I understand more or less what, what you are coming from, and you put your purpose, no? Prepare to die. I think that is a, a really good example, no? <laughs> if maybe you are like lost in how your uh, father died, the other person goes and you cannot kill it. And maybe if you kill it directly, it's a little bit rude, no? So, so to give just the right amount of context and context. Also, we talk about the digital and the analog uh, information that we are transmitting in every communication. And it's very important, this nonverbal communication. There were uh, a lot of studies uh, about nonverbal communication. And for example, I'm putting this one that is like the Albert Meravian's rule, that is a psychologist that studied a lot about nonverbal communication. And he find out, just applied in feelings and attitudes, that the verbal communication only matters a 7%. And the tone of your voice is more like a 38%. And 55% of the, of the thing that I'm receiving as a, in, in a message is body language and, and faster expression. And more than that, uh, he realizes that when uh, the verbal communication and non-verbal communication were not lying, the receptor of the communication feel like some discomfort and it was like not feeling angry and, and do not believe the, the message, no? And in fact, if the converse, the communication is not, the, the verbal communication, non-verbal communication is not aligned, what the person will believe uh, will be much more like what is perceived from the non-verbal communication than what the verbal communication. If I say yes, I will say, okay, you are tired for me. Don't tell me anything. Okay. So, and there are like different studies with different percentage, but all of them agree that in most of the cases, you no know, verbal communication is even more important than verbal communication. So, it's very important that we are aware of our verbal and non verbal communication and transmit the message with the right tone, with the right expression, and in the right way. And uh, he got to, he got to this. A term that is used in, in other fields, but in communication also, that is congress, no? That is, that when my body language and facial expression, my tone of voice and my better communication are aligned, the communication is much more effective. 
Okay, something that is also very important, like a lot of communication happen inside of us. Because as we said, we all have emotions, we have our internal thoughts, our limiting beliefs, our biases, and this affects a lot on what we are communicating and what we are receiving. So it's very important that we can recognize this. And okay, I'm very angry. Maybe it's not the right moment to communicate, or maybe I need to, or I'm receiving something, but maybe I'm biased, no? And I receive a communication that, okay, today I cannot attend the meeting, and I can say, okay, I know this person is, la is, is lazy, it's always like that, you know? But we are biased about what we believe about this person. So it's very important that we also make this, uh, we have this habit of recognizing what, what is happening inside of us, when, when we receive a communication or when we are communicating. Maybe we are very upset about something that we heard, but at least, but why we are so upset, no? What is really what, what is happening? And taking into account this, we can have this, what I say that is augmenting Congress, no? That is, okay, if I really have a, a really good self-awareness, I cannot only align my non-verbal communication with my verbal communication, I can align what I really feel, what I want, what what I want to say, what I what I think, with my non-verbal communication and verbal communication to be completely effective, no? In what I want to say. And very related to this, it is this this framework from Marshall Rosenberg, that is another psychologist, American psychologist, that created and is promoting this way of communicating, this non-violent communication that is very focused on, on feelings came from a, a psychologist that is called Carl Rogers that is very linked of putting the person in the center and really understanding the person. And this framework by itself, I think that is very powerful. Every time that I need to say something, uh, I start with an observation that is a fact. And here in this fact, I don't include any judgment or, or any evaluation. Okay, uh, uh, you interrupt me that is something that is a fact or, but you are being rude to me. I'm judging like the interruption, like a, like a something that is rude, but maybe it's not, no. Then I put my feelings and here it is very important that you recognize and also own your emotions, no. It is very common that we say, okay, you made me angry, but why, I, I am angry, no, but it is really because of you, but it's another thing, no. So start with a fact, without judgment, state your feelings, say what you need, no? It's important also to reflect why I'm upset, maybe because I need uh, this to happen in, in the next week and I'm not sure and I feel insecure. Uh, and then make a request, because a lot of time when we are communicating and things go wrong, really the other person don't know what we are expecting or what we want, no? So if we really think about what we need, and make a really concrete concrete request, it is much more easy that, that this request is fulfilled, no? it's, it's, it's met. And this this framework is, is, some, is a framework that was very useful for me. And as a lot of things that we are talking today seems very obvious, but then it's very difficult to put in practice. Okay, so this is more or less from the sender side, and maybe we can talk a little from the receiver side now. Okay, for, from the receiver side, something that I feel that is very important is active listening. That we can listen in a very different ways, no? We can partially listen like, okay, we are listening just uh, the study that we are like, uh, they are telling us just to tell us, like, how was your weekend? Oh, it was okay, we went to a concert. Oh, I went to the mountains. And, well, you, I, maybe I, you don't hear me at all, no? I, I don't mind what you say. But, I just want to, to give my, my really good story. No? Or maybe like we are just, and this is very common, no? And I think in, in some way it, it's natural, no? We are just listening to, to, to answer to this person, no? And we are like, as we are listening, we are just like to think, okay, when, when it's finished, I want to respond this. And I want to talk about this. No? So it is very important to have this activity, no? And, and these are more or less the steps, not be fully present, like really 
make an effort in listening, make an effort on being there. Also, it's very important the non-verbal communication here and, and to use it, no? Like, see what the other is transmitting with the face, with the body language, or what you are transmitting. And also, it's very important to be aware of this. Maybe, for example, in remote work, no? Maybe you, I, I don't like to put my camera, okay, but you are limiting the communication because you are not transmitting in this way, no? And it's more difficult to, to get to an understanding. It is okay, but we, we need to know what we are limiting, no? Avoid distraction. Today it's very difficult to in, in, in a meeting how many of you uh, are, are like answering some Slack message or, or, or see other no and when you are doing it it's okay you know because at the end it's just a message but when you are transmitting something important and look at someone doing it it's like it's not the same also be patient no uh, try to never interrupt let the person finish what they are saying uh, listen to understand really what they are like transmitting and not just to, to answer, as we said before, and be comfortable with silence. For me, this is very difficult. I, I, I really jump to, to uh, say something, but in silence, the, the people think and start like saying a lot of other things that they are was not uh, going to say in the beginning, you know, and you learn a lot more. So it's very important to, to also be comfortable with silence. Uh, one very important thing about uh, in communication in this active listening is this feedback. No, you are giving a feedback, but you are still listening. And in in some ways of very effective feedback is paraphrase what you are hearing. No? To to really be sure that you are understanding correct. Okay, you are telling me that this would be a bad decision because uh, our architecture will not escalate as we want to. Okay, I, I'm understanding. Now we can continue the conversation from there. And also reflect, no? And you are telling to me that you are angry, no? That would be really hard for you. Or I understand that you are angry, no? But it ain't emotions. So he can continue like talking from there and we can like get deeper. And also ask open questions. Try to understand and to understand you need to be really curious, no? And, and not just uh, stop when, when they stop, just start your own conversation and really try to understand more, no? Okay, and what happened then? Or where where were you? Or what the other person did, no? So you understand more and you get more information. Okay. So another thing that is important, you know, maybe I'm, I'm a really bad person. Uh, so I, I'm the only one that I, I'm being recorded so I can like raise my hand, but <laughs> you can raise that, you will not be recorded. But I don't know how many of you in some moment, in some moment of weakness, thought about a colleague and say, okay, he's careless, he don't mind, he always do this thing, no? Or no, she doesn't come to this meeting because doesn't value my time and, and my relationship with, he, with, with her, no? I don't know, some, some of you uh, think about these things. I, I, I did, I did, no? But maybe when we turn around, how many of you really didn't do your best on purpose, didn't do a, a, a good work on purpose? Or how many of you heard the feelings of another person on purpose? Uh, I think that it is very important to recognize that the great majority of people want to do their best, want to be recognized, want to feel that they belong, want to build good relationships, healthy relationships, no? And this is positive intent, no? Every time that we receive something and we just start having these thoughts or, or, or in our own, no? assume that the people have good intentions and the great majority of people want to do their best, no? want to do it a good, want to do a, a good work. And when you are having these thoughts, try to refrain and try to put it in, in a positive way. Okay, Maybe uh, she's not coming to our meeting because there is something important that arises. Maybe he, she said whatever. So this is something very obvious, but something that we miss a lot and is very important. No? And I had a lot of conversation with my team, with people like, no, because he is like that and he is like, well, and it's well, but did you, did you ask what happened? Did you really think about that maybe it's another thing? And it's not so common when we are angry or when we have some, some history, it's not so common to, to have this positive picture. 
And behind this positive thinking at the end, there is a, a concept that, that seems like also like very natural and very simple that is empathy. And I think that is one of the most important in communication. And at the end, it's like to, to be able to put in the, in the other shoes, to understand what the other are feeling, what are experiencing, what are thinking, no? And, and this is very important. And this is this kind of rule that they say, you know, that it's okay, treat the others the way that you want to be treated. But in reality, I don't want to, I, I, I don't like this, this one, no? Because I think that the, the, the important thing are they, you know, if, and if you treat the others that you want to be treated, you are thinking of yourself, no? But treat the others and really they want to be treated. No, I'm very direct. I prefer to be direct to others. Maybe the other person don't want to have like so direct conversations, no? And this is another personal note here. It's like, I think that really empathy is the most important skill in, in the work environment. And it's the one that we are always assuming that it is on every person. And in a lot of the moments is the, the one that, that we are more lucky you know, this empathy. Some of the, of the last concepts that I want to talk uh, today is the neurolinguistic programming. That is, uh, the theory that how a uh, language with behaviors and with um, uh, language uh, thoughts and behaviors are connected and emotions to make a uh, to affect in our perception to, to make our own subjective perception no? and one of the most important one of the key concepts on, on natural and neurolinguistic programming is this the map is not the territory and it's a reminder that every time that we see a map, we are not seeing the reality. We are seeing just a reproduction or a subject, a reproduction of the reality, but it's not the reality. No? And there is another concept that I think that helps a lot and helps a lot with, with empathy that are the meta programs. That is different patterns that the people have to, to understand the reality. So it is not for labeling someone, it is for understanding the, the inclination of every people and also being more able to, to empathize with them and to understand better, no? And there will be people, they, they are like a lot of meta programs, there are some of, these are some of them. And for example, there are people that are more motivated to, for, for getting something, to, for, for getting to a goal, to an achievement. But there are others that are more motivated to to avoid some, some problem or to avoid some difficult situation. And understanding this and understanding the person, we can like be more effective in our communication. Also internal and external, there are people that doesn't know any needs, like external, so much external recognition, no? And it's just how they feel. And that's the more important, most important things, but there are others that judge depending on what they are receiving, what are the recognition that they are receiving. Also, there are people that thrive when they are, have a lot of options and, and they can explore, and there are others that need a guide to follow. And also, there are people that it's more easy to communicate with them if, if what you are talking about uh, finding similarities, no? Put in examples that are similar and, and put it in, in uh, like making this, these examples, but there are others that would think more about the opposite things, no? With control examples. So, this is something that also we can take into account. So, more or less, this is what I wanted to talk. So, I think that we started saying that communication is much more than just communication. And I think that I hope that you get from here saying that, okay, communication is also preparation, it's clear language, it's finding the right balance, it's building relationships, it's assuming good intentions. Is congruence, knowing yourself, empathy, listening, and so many others. And I wanted to also like end with another quote, one another of my favorite quotes, uh, because there are a lot of much smarter people than me that I can reference to, and it's this one, no? The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that has taken place. And a lot of problems that we have when like I had a lot of time this conversation about, no, but this happened and this is causing 
this this person does does did some, this thing and is causing that and it's okay but did you talk with him no okay so let's try to always communicate and try to have this in mind the frameworks and tools that we we talked to today to make our communication as effectively yeah. as effective as possible so thank you thank you so much I really hope that we can like also share a little your own experiences about your experiences with the frameworks, other frameworks that may have helped you in the past, things that you are learning. I don't know if someone wants to participate. Yeah. I have learned about new frameworks using Google Docs yesterday, and it really makes sense. I'm still trying to implement it. It's called Era, P I R A. So P is like for point, for example, uh, taking shower is good for flirting, for example, that's a point. And then you talk about the action uh, and the results. Since I've taken a shower, 100% of the times I've gotten a second date. And then you finish with a question, ask, that's the A. And it's like, for example, how many times do you take a shower? It's like that structure. I think it works well. Nice. Thank you so much. I, think I have mixed feelings about communication because I invest like one or two years studying some of the things that you mentioned. And I have, I, I reached a really weird conclusion. It's like in the tech, in the tech space, we tend to be very deterministic by the nature of the things that we are doing. And I think communication is non-deterministic. So when I when I listen a lot of frameworks, recipes, something like that is like, okay, people are uh, are aimed to find like a manual for better communication. But the point is it's more important to play and to iterate and talk to people that you are not used to, to talk because for example in your in your case i assume you have a lot of switching context thing so if you have to prepare <laughs> be present it's almost impossible people People are, are are willing to do it, but it's it's not realistic. That's that's the point. I know I, I don't know if I sound weird. No, no. Because I it, sometimes it's like, come on, we we can look for years to the the, the 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 best framework ever about communication, and it fails again and again. So I think that don't think. Don't think too much and try to apply the common sense. Yeah, but I completely agree, and I think that the most important things in communication is the one that more abstract, like empathy, and completely, and it's like that, no? And, and, and really try to understand your level. Uh, I completely agree, but sorry, I, I, I just know a little, no? But, but at the end, there, there is no recipe, no? And if you are following the recipe, it's more common sense, and that's what I want to say. That we say no is common sense, but a lot of times common sense is the best one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's, it's also an illusion. <laughs> and also, it is a very difficult topic, and uh, for me, it's very frustrating because uh, we talk about some sender tools and some receiver tools. But I think that we all need to be clear, and, and it's something that is frustrating that when the communication fails, it is always responsibility of the sender. Like, yeah. and, and if someone don't want to listen to us, you need to really understand why they don't want to listen to you, and 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 try another way. So, as a receiver, we can put it more easily and we can apply things. But at the end, the responsibility of the communication is 
it's on the center. I think it's very frustrating because with, uh, some people is very difficult to communicate and you will have a really hard time. And it's what you say, so many different people. No? From one will be very easy, from another will be very hard. But you need to learn to communicate with people. Thank you so much. Okay. Also, about experiences, maybe you said, okay, I, I don't believe in active listening. It's, it's not that, or, or whatever, I don't know. No, I, I don't know, but I, I think it, people just really wish and willing to do it. But I think that it's like a quick thing. It's like try to be more aware of the situation and try to force you to ask for the context. Like uh, all philosophers, like what we are talking about, in what context, in what situation. And be sure that we are talking about the same thing. Because in my experience in technology, it's like people are discussing all the time and they mean different things. They don't have the same, the same ground. Yes. I think that it's also a, a, a rich Typical me opinion of my brother is human. I think that you, we are, you are not talking about what you think that you are talking about. <laughs> we experience it a lot in technology. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. Uh, I will try to share this presentation in some format with you. And I put some of the resources of books and that I read in the moment that were like and meaningful for me. And I'm very happy to work for us here. Uh, your watch um, and to continue the conversation now in the networking or, or later in, in social media or, or whatever. So thank you. Now uh, we are always preparing some, some food and some drinks so we can like, make some, some networking. So uh, we are very happy you can stay for a little. And just the, the only thing is like if you need to leave the building, we need to, to go with you for security reasons. So let us know. And also you have drinks there, we will have some, some food, and the bathroom unit is, is here in this world. Okay. So thank you so much. Yeah.